Okay, so let me explain. I am 27 years old and on June 25th, I'm supposed to marry my lovely fiance. We're both partygoers and both want a big, nice wedding. The only problem is we both work full-time jobs and needed some extra money. So I was browsing job websites over and over searching for a good part-time job. That's when I hit the jackpot. A nighttime security position for my local airport. It was so perfect, so easy, so convenient. The next night, I drove straight to the airport for the interview. Okay, so now that you have the backstory, let's get to the actual stuff. As I showed up to the airport, I drove into the back lot. It was a small little spot that was in the back. I opened the door and I walked through. Inside the building, it was warm. I walked down the hallway that led into the main building. The airport was rather large with small shops and restaurants surrounding this area. I took note of my surrounding area and noticed a double door in the back wall labeled employees only. I walked through there and saw a woman sitting at the table facing me. Sitting next to her were two men in suits. She got up and smiled before walking over to me. She shook my hand and greeted me. We talked and she asked me about my skills and hobbies before she eventually hired me. And then came the shocking news that I would start tonight. I was surprised and a little angry on such short notice, but I reminded myself that this was for my fiancé. So I told them fine and I was happy to start working tonight. She told me that she was glad and wanted to give me a tour of the airport. She led me through the winding open area, from the luggage drop off and around to the security scanner thing. Past that was the long open area where you would find your waiting area. After the full tour, I won't bore you with everything, but I was led into a room near the security scanning area. This was the security guard room where I would be working most of the time. She handed me a security manual guide and wished me good luck. Good luck? Who wishes someone good luck? I thought it was pretty weird when I sat down in my office chair and scrolled on my phone. I glanced at the clock and noticed that it read 11.43. My shift started at 11.30 each night, so I already had to start working. I grabbed the employee manual making sure that I didn't miss anything. As I flipped through the pages about criminal attacks and illegal travelers, I got to a page about rules. I glanced at the page and this is what it said. Greetings, new arrival. I hope you have settled in now because it's time to begin working. Each night, you may have to deal with these minor inconveniences on your normal job. Here are the instructions to follow. 1. At exactly midnight, you will hear automatic voice come over the speakers saying that Flight 606 has landed. Now, pay attention to your security cameras. If you see nobody waiting in Area D, then you are fine. If there are people in this area, you must immediately get up and go to Area D. Use the handgun in the drawer and shoot all the people in that area. Do not worry, they are not real people. 2. Make sure you are to perform daily round checks throughout the airport. Sometimes, you will hear sounds playing through the speaker. Pay attention. If it's music, you are fine and clear to complete the check. If it's static, immediately book it back to your security room and lock all the doors. 3. You may encounter a friendly man listening to music near the restroom. Be polite and answer all of his questions. If he asks you to listen with him, politely decline. He may get persistent and if that happens, back away from him and ignore anything that he says. 4. While sitting in your room, you may notice that it sounds like people are knocking on your door. Make sure that it's locked and continue on with your business. 5. If at any time on your patrol, you hear a loud plane taking off, hide in the nearest shop or restaurant. Close your eyes and do not alert the creature that will walk down the hall. 6. While sitting in your office, you may receive a phone call at around 2.30 a.m. Do not answer it, no matter who it is. 7. You may see a close friend or a relative walking around the airport. They may call your name or try to get your attention. Don't look at them or talk to them. 8. 
While patrolling the airport, you may stumble across shops that seem off or have uh, strange names. If you feel this way, you must not go into that shop. Do not pay any attention to it. If you fail to do this, they will never let you out. 9. At around 4 a.m., you will hear a woman whistling. She will be standing by the security station. Try to back away slowly and not get caught by her. If she notices you, act calm. Walk through our scanners and pray you don't have anything that gets detected. Leave your handgun in the office from 3.30 to 4.15. 10. At 5.15, head to the baggage claim where you will end your shift. Take the escalators down to the lower level. If the escalator stops, close your eyes and do not open them until the elevator starts moving again. 11. Now, here's the risky part. You must take a transport train to the baggage claim area. Wait for train A. If you see any other train, do not board. You may see passengers get off the train but pay no attention. They can't hurt you. 12. Once on the train, wait for the doors to close and then sit down and relax. Wait for the train to start moving. If the lights go out at any point, hide under the seats and wait for the lights to come back on. At station E, you will exit the train and head to the baggage claim area. 13. Once at the baggage claim area, you will finish up your shift by starting all baggage conveyors. If you see any bags that have blood splattered over them, do not panic. Grab the bag and take it off the cart. Use the hand rag provided by our custodial staff. Wipe down the suitcase and put it back on the belt. 14. Do not speak to any employees down there. You may see a man or a woman wheeling a cart. They may ask you for help but decline and walk away. If they follow you, take the handgun and do what you have to do. If they still follow you, then crawl under the conveyor and whiz around until they are gone. We know this may sound silly, but for the sake of your life, silly might be your only chance to survive. At 6.30 in the morning, the day guard will appear. Let him take your shift and you are free to go. Thank you for helping out your local airport. Redacted Airport Management. What a joke, I thought. I glanced at the clock and noticed the time read 11.59. I got up to do my first round check when all of a sudden, an automated voice blasted on the speakers. Flight 606 has landed. Area D. I glanced at the cameras. People had gotten off the plane. They all looked normal except for one thing. They had no face. I almost puked before I got up and I grabbed the gun. I looked at the rules and realized what I had to do. I opened my door and ran down the hallway, ready to take care of these people. I got to Area D and I aimed the pistol. I did what the rules told me to do. Unwillingly though. I dropped the gun out of shock and stumbled back. What had I done? I walked back to the office in a trance, when all of a sudden, loud static came through the tiny speakers. I froze for a second, but then took off running. I heard a loud crash behind me. I froze and turned around, and that's when I saw this 12-foot-tall beast. It looked like a dog mixed with a bear and maybe some other alien breed in there. It dashed towards me and that's when I snapped back to my senses. I ran full speed to my office and grabbed the door. I opened it up when I was lifted off my feet. I crashed on the ground and saw the beast barreling towards the door. My light attendant moved the large shelf to create a barricade. Now it's 1237 and I'm typing this up with the creature outside. I can't do this anymore. I can't. I tried calling my wife, but no answer. Police, no answer. I don't know what to do. I sat in my office, trying to type the last post when I realized that the banging had stopped. I got up and sat down in my chair. I decided I would suck it up. I would survive. I knew what I had to do. So I checked the cameras and glanced at the clock. I realized it was 1.13, so I had to take my round check. I don't know if I told you guys this, but the book said it should do a round check about every half an hour. 
I didn't want to miss the one o'clock one, so I got up. I walked down the hall and checked all the little shops. What was this place? There was a burger joint, an ice cream parlor, and a plastic surgeon. Wait. I backtracked to the plastic surgeon and saw a guy in a doctor's outfit working on some red-dressed woman. He looked up and gave me a wave. I looked up at the sign and saw the place was called Cosmic Change. Now I know people that know Caps was on purpose. I was confused when I found him walking towards me. And that's when I remembered the rule list. This place was definitely not normal. I started to back away as the surgeon came closer. Come on in. He said this in a spring tone. It was like hearing the voice of a cartoon character. The voice was rich and soothing. It sounded like he could just make this hell disappear. He took one more step when I realized what was happening, and I took off running back to my office. I could hear the woman's screams echo throughout the airport. I sat down in my office, trying to figure out a plan. Could I really survive and then leave forever? Will they ever let me out? These questions echoed in my mind, bouncing around. I was looking through the cameras when a knock on the door came. I nearly jumped out of my skin. Hello? This is the county police. I believe you made a call. I froze. Could it really be the police? Will they set me free? I stopped. No, it was fake. It was a trap. I sat back down and ignored it. I pulled up my phone and checked the time. 2.29. I let out a long sigh when I heard a loud buzz. I whipped out my phone and it was a call from my wife. Yes, yes, yes. She must have heard my call and... Wait. I glanced at the caller ID again. Now a red mom. Why would my mom be calling me? I decided to ignore it before referring to the rules. Right, don't answer the call at 2.30. I put my head on my desk and slowly began to cry. Why? It wasn't fair. But I knew that I couldn't stop now. So I sat up and grabbed my flashlight and went out to do my shift. I stormed out of the door, whirling my handgun. I was going to survive. I checked every shop and restroom, heard nothing, saw nothing. I was walking back to my office when I heard music. I at first thought that it was coming from the speakers, but soon noticed it was quieter. I turned around and there he was. A tall man who had Elvis hairstyle and a Hawaiian shirt. I held my breath and began walking away. He turned around and smiled. Hey, what's up? I continued walking. Hey, what do you think of this song? He asked in a polite way. I said no thank you and he gave me a weird look. Buddy, I'm just asking you to listen. I said no thank you again and continued walking. You listen to me. I stopped dead in my tracks. Listen to me. My blood froze and my heart stopped. I heard loud running footsteps behind me and I turned around and bang. The man fell to the ground. His colored shirt now sprouting a red blossom. He stared at me and held out his earbud. A smile started to trace his lips. Listen. And with that, he screamed before his head exploded with blood. Another hole had pierced his head. I silently put the gun in the holster, and I walked back to my office when something got up. Little footsteps approaching me. I took off running back to the office, and I ducked through the door, closed and locked it. I peered through the window to see the man. Only now, he was disfigured. His face had been shattered like glass. Red covered his once colorful shirt. He rammed on the door with his new claws. I grabbed my gun and I put one through the office door as well, and the banging stopped. It was over. I sighed in relief. I removed the crumbled rulers from my pocket and checked the time. 3.34. How? I decided not to question it and I moved on to my shaft. Walking around, I noticed it was unusually quiet. I took a right near the entrance and then heard the unmistakable sound of a plane landing, and it was loud, ear-shattering loud. 
I remembered suddenly and ran into the nearest shop, a burger joint. I ducked behind the counter and closed my eyes. I even held my breath. Loud footsteps echoed throughout the empty abyss. I prayed to every god out there. And then I felt a tap. It was light but unmistakable. Another one on my shoulder. Heavy breathing was in my ear. But I wouldn't open my eyes. And then it went away. And just like that, I got up and continued walking. I hate this so much. But I must prevail for my fiancé. And that's when I heard a beep behind me. I was confused at first. I started turning around and saw the security sign. Oh heck no. Excuse me sir, can you step through the security scanner? I didn't know what to do. There was no whistling, there was nothing but silence. I fumbled for my gun and thought about chucking it into the nearest store. Sir, I need to scan you. I walked over to her and took off my jacket. I slid the gun under the table and put my jacket in the bin. It slid right along to the x-ray. She locked her eyes on the computer and started clicking away at the keyboard. I held my breath and walked through the scanner. Then a beep. I froze. But she didn't look up, so I took that as a good thing. And that's when the beeping started again. She stared at deadpan into the monitor, her eyes frozen in time. How? I thought. I faced the woman and watched as she became unnatural. Her face started to crack. Jagged edges appeared. Her limbs grew in size. I took off running and I knew I couldn't make it back to the office. So that's when I made a cut to the nearest store. I hid in there and prayed. I'm here now, still praying. If you read this, send help. I was hiding, crouched down under some toy shop. Stuffed bears and animals everywhere. That lady had been searching for 20 minutes and I didn't know what to do. I could make a break back for the office, I have the gun. And that's when I realized the dials on one corner. They were no ordinary dials but instead, horrifying. There was one, its mouth gaping open with black paint leaking out of its eyes. No. I whirled back to the entry of the shop to see the security guard smiling. Before fading away, this was a trap. They had lured me right here and now I was going to die. All alone. What would they tell my future wife? The dolls moved closer. Their wooden heads jerked in my direction. One step, then another. I scooted backwards and got up on my feet. One. I backed away further and took a step to my right. Two. I bumped into a large clown toy that stared at me with glowing eyes. The hand reached out as I was caught in a trance. Three. I shot straight out of the toy store, not taking a look back. I heard loud footsteps behind me, but I kept running. All the adrenaline carried my withered body through the endless hallways. I made another turn before coming up on the office. A doll clamored on my shoulder, dragging me down. It opened its mouth to take a bite out of me, but I grabbed the handgun and smacked it in the head. It fell off and tumbled to the ground. I opened the office door and I dove inside. The clown doll was about to ram me, eyes locked on the target. I kicked the door with the last of my strength and the clown stuck right in between. It started to move its way through the crack when its porcelain head shattered. I lifted my foot up and I stomped on it again, until it was nothing but a few cracked pieces and one glowing eye. Deep breaths, that was all I could tell myself. I sit in the chair once again and flip open the computer cameras. The body of the clown doll is still laying on the floor. The rest of the dolls now crowd around it. I should have looked what store I dove into. Once again, I barely had managed to get out with my life. I'm getting really lucky here. Another mistake like that and I'm pretty much finished. But I have to follow the rules and survive. I don't want to break into the rule, but I also don't want to run through the crowd of dolls and creatures that roam the hallways. I glanced at the time. It was now 4.16. Once again, it feels off, but the rules never said anything about that. And that's when an idea popped into my head. What if I broke through early and got down to the transport train? 
If I could get myself set up in the new booth area, then I would be ready for the next encounters. After a few minutes of thinking it over, I decided that I would go for it. I didn't have anything left. I loaded the last mag of the handgun. I opened the door and saw nothing. No dolls, no demons, nothing. Just a dark, empty airport. I needed to follow the signs that led to the train. I took a deep breath and I stepped outside. I made sure that I had everything packed. I would need to get past some of the loading areas to the escalators. I clicked on the flashlight and followed its narrow beam. After a few minutes of walking, I noticed the whispers. It was faint but there. I could only hear my name being whispered over and over again. I shuddered at the thought of millions of creatures surrounding me and taunting me. I walked past one of the areas and noticed shadowy people sitting and staring. I shined my light at the figures and saw no face, just white, blank eyes. I quickly looked away as I didn't want to disturb something I wasn't supposed to. I walked past some of these shadowy people in the hallway. I tried not to look or shine my light on any of them. Every once in a while, I would feel a cold tap on my shoulder. When I turned to look, I would see a shadow creature next to me. I kept walking through the endless abyss. When I found the escalator going down, I hopped on it. I had almost reached the bottom when it halted to a stop. And the lights began to flicker and I squeezed my eyes shut. I even stopped my breathing and didn't notice it until I almost had passed out. Something that blew past my face and seemed to reach out to me. It was that feeling you get when someone holds a finger right up to your face and you can sense it, even though you may not be looking. When it finally went away, I let out a huge sigh of relief and walked the rest of the way down. I followed the hallway as it led me around the maze. When I got to the tracks, I noticed a transport vehicle already pulling out. This one was broken with cracks and blood pouring out of the doors. Disfigured people stared at me and banged on the glass. I looked away and shuddered at the thought of being stuck with them. It seemed as I had arrived early, I could wait a few minutes before my train would arrive. I looked through the list of rules to make sure that I didn't miss anything, but I couldn't find anything I did wrong. I was still alive, so I took that as a plus. When I heard a train pull up, I quickly folded the list of rules and put it back into my pocket. When the train arrived, I made sure that it was the right one. I waited for the doors to open when something unexpected happened. The door slid open and people walked out. Not just shadow people, but actual real people. I at first was confused. You see, a lot of people have asked why there aren't any people at the airport during my shift. The reason for that is actually because this airport closes at night. Due to an incident a few years ago, where a man had killed a young woman during the night. That's the reason why it's closed for now, and they were searching for a new guard. So, I was surprised when real people came out. The last person was my... fiancé. She wore her favorite dress. She exited the tram and moved toward me. I was taken aback by the glow that she had surrounding her. It was beautiful. I moved in closer before I realized that she was smiling. Her eyes were red and her smile was forest. She strode toward me with her hands outstretched. She looked like a cobra ready to strike. I backed away from her horrifying smile. And then her face started cracking like the security guard. I backed away, slowly reaching for the gun. I gripped it in my hand, aiming it at my love. I squeezed my eyes shut before pulling the trigger. Her body flew down to the ground with a wound in her chest. Red poured out and she smiled at me before her eyes went white. I clutched her body in my arms and carried it towards the tram. I looked at her one last time with a tear dripping down my cheek. I laid her body on the floor of the train. Then the door shut and we took off, leaving this place forever.